Hi, this is a video on how to get started with Sakai. The first thing that we need to do is to go to the Rutgers Sakai site, which is sakai.ruckers.edu. And in the upper right hand corner, there are two logins. One is for the NetID, which is what you will need to use in order to get your rosters and so forth. The other one is a guest login which can be used uh, if you only have an email address if you haven't gotten your NetID yet. If you haven't gotten your NetID, please contact me so we can get that going. So click on NetID login and put your NetID and password in. And then you will come to this home page under my workspace. There are two ways to create a Sakai site. The first is to do what we're going to do here, which is go to Worksite Setup and set up a fresh site. The other way is to duplicate an existing site, which I'm going to go over in a separate video. So under my workspace, on the left-hand side, find the button that says Worksite Setup. And at the top, there are a few buttons. We need to find the one that says New. The next screen has the type of site that you're going to create. For all of the course sites, you need to choose Course Site. A project site is not attached to any particular roster. It's just an open site for a project that you can share with other people. But we're going to set up a course site, and I'm going to choose the academic term. And with just the top part selected, we're going to be creating one from scratch. Alternatively, there are some templates that are built in, so you can look at those and decide if that's what you want to do, you're welcome to choose one of those templates. But I'm just going to do it from scratch today. So scroll to the bottom and hit continue. And then you will see a list of the rosters that you have access to. If you don't see any rosters listed, let me know, give me a call, and we'll make sure that you're linked up with your correct roster. I have access to all the rosters so that I can help people. So my list is especially long. So I'm just going to choose one of them here. At the bottom of the page, then you're going to hit continue. The next page has the basic course site information, and the first one is the site title. And you can leave it with the default course number and semester, or you could change that if you want. This description box is what's going to show up on the home page of your Sakai site. So you can put some more info here if you want. You can go back and edit all of this information later. So don't worry about filling it all in completely right now. You can skip the short description and then just make sure that your name and email address are correct at the bottom. The next page has a list of the tools that are available for your site, and you can include as many or as few as you want. You can always change these later. If you have online assignments that you're collecting from the students, I would definitely recommend the Assignments or Assignments 2 tool. There at the bottom of the list are, are, are some alternatives. Some of these are um, newer or older alternatives to some of these other tools. Definitely you want to go down and check the resources. This is where you're going to put all of your documents, PDF, presentations, and so forth. I really like the mail tool. At the top, automatically checked is the announcements tool, which allows you to send out information to your students. The mail tool allows you to send out information as well, but you can also choose individuals to send messages to, which can save a lot of time. The syllabus tool is handy for posting your syllabus. Tests and quizzes is another great tool if you're doing any kind of online tests. And I like the gradebook too. It allows you to calculate uh, weighted grades as well as include extra credit. So once you've chosen which tools that you want, it'll also prompt you at the bottom to see if you want to reuse material from other sites that you own. So if I wanted to reuse some material from a site from one of the other semesters, I could choose that and then hit continue. Now this, pre this old site had a syllabus, announcements, resources in it that I can reuse. I probably don't want to reuse the announcements or the syllabus. Those are going to be new, but I probably do want to include the resources from that other site. Obviously, if this is a new site, you wouldn't do this, but 
If you want to reuse material, this is a quick way to do it. Hit continue, and here under site status, um, you can choose whether you want to go ahead and publish the site. This means if the students log into Sakai, they're going to see your site listed, or you can leave it as a draft. If you leave it as a draft, none of the students can see it until you publish it. Okay, so I'm going to leave mine as a draft because I want to fill some information in before I publish it. So I'm going to hit continue. Then it's going to give me a confirmation screen with all of the options that I chose. I'm going to hit create site. After your site has been created, it will go into the list under the My Workspace. And an easy way to find your sites is to click on More Sites on the toolbar. And they are grouped by semester. So I'm going to go to Fall 2012 and pull up this site I just created. Here on the home page at the upper left, we can see that this is an unpublished site. And when I'm ready, I can hit the Publish Now, and then the students would be able to see it. On a lot of these tools, you will see buttons at the top that allow you to make changes. So I could hit Options on this one, for instance. I could change the title of it and the height, and I could add some more information to my home page and so forth. I want to go next to Site Info. Site info is the control panel, if you will, of your Sakai site. This is where you can see all of your students and make changes to the tools and so forth. So at the bottom of the site is a list of your students down below here. Also, right above that list is a really handy link to show photo rosters. So this link will open up a PDF of all of your students and a picture of each one. At the top, there are some buttons to edit the site information. Here we could change the title of the site. The next button is to edit the tools. It's going to bring back that same list so we could add or remove any tools. The next one is for page order. This is to reorder the tools over here on the left. And so if I want tests and quizzes to be under assignments, for instance, I could just drag and drop that. You can also hide certain tools from students if you want to. I'm going to hit Save. That'll reorder everything over here. You can also add participants to your site. This would be for adding other instructors or TAs. I would not put any students in this way. They should come automatically in and out if they add or drop through that roster that's attached to the site. You can edit the class rosters. So this is the number that's attached to this particular site. If this was a cross-listed course and I forgot to check the other course, I could add the roster that way. Or if you accidentally added the wrong roster, you could go in, remove it, then add the correct one. The rest of these links are for more advanced options that you probably won't need to use. And at any time, if you want to see what the students see, there is an Enter Student View button at the top right. If I click that, you'll see that those buttons went away that allow me to make changes. And you can go through each of the tools, and you will see exactly what the students see. Just remember that if you want to make changes, you have to click Exit Student View to get back to the administrative side. So that's it for setting up a site. If you have any questions or if you want to meet with me individually or if you have any questions about the individual tools, please don't hesitate to contact me. Thanks.